Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So currently it is May 1st. We are already in the month of May and that means that we have six months and four days until election day, election night, when we'll be watching the returns come in on this channel. And that means because it's the first of the month, we have to do yet another election prediction video. Donald Trump and Joe Biden, both the presumptive nominees of each party. And it is becoming more apparent by the day that Joe Biden is not likely going to be replaced. They're spending all this money trying to prop him up, although his poll numbers are absolutely just in the gutter. And this is important to analyze. Donald Trump is leading the popular vote, not just, you know, in enough states to give him an electoral college win, which he never led the state polls either in the states that mattered in 2016 or 2020. Now, Donald Trump leads the popular vote by 1.5%. You have a very left-leaning NPR Marist poll. That's the only poll in the mix that gives Biden a lead. Even Quinnipiac is a tie now, and there's a lot of polls. Even CNN has Trump up. Rasmussen's not even in the aggregate. I guarantee you if they released a poll, Trump's lead would probably go up to about two points. And you compare this to 2020, at this point, Biden had a five-point lead, but Biden and Clinton had large leads very late. Biden led by 10 points in mid-October, and even then it took miracles for him. And then in 2016, Hillary Clinton, she was leading in the upper single digits with a couple weeks to go as well. Didn't work out too well for her. So the fact that Trump is in a good position and the polls usually underestimate him is a very good sign, but also every single swing state has Donald Trump winning by at least 1%. In many cases, he's outside of the margin of error. And this includes a lot of swing states like Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania that Donald Trump always has overperformed the polls in. And you talk about states like Ohio, Iowa, Florida, and Texas, they don't even consider those swing states anymore because Donald Trump is expected to win them by a very sizable margin. So this is good news for Trump. Biden's approval rating in the gutter the country, by a very wide margin, believes that the country is headed in the wrong direction. Not a good sign for Joe Biden, especially because approval rating is like the number one indicator for how well an incumbent president does in their re-election bid. So we're going to fill this map out because we have to. But first, I have to tell you guys about our very good friends over at My Patriot Supply. Because it's no longer a question of if something is coming, it's when. The only shock will be the what. Your gut, your instincts, the feeling you've had that something disastrous is on the way, it's all true, but what are you going to do about it now while you still have some control? Your first step is going to my website, preparewithredeagle.com. Your next step is stocking up on multiple four-week emergency food supply kits from My Patriot Supply because you can save $50 per kit for a limited time. There's no better time to buy in bulk. My Patriot Supply is equipped to help you prepare. As the original Patriot company, they've helped over 2 million families ready themselves. These four-week kits with Ready Hour Foods provide over 2,000 calories a day, and they last up to 25 years in storage. So grab and go when the crisis comes. Get these kits for $50 off right now at preparewithreadeagle.com. That's preparewithreadeagle.com because you can never be too prepared. So... Let's prepare for the election. On the other hand, by filling out this map, we're going to start off with the safe Republican states, the states that are going to go for Donald Trump by 10 percentage points or more. And we can fill these out. The Mountain West is a big part of that. A lot of the Great Plains states as well fit into this. You also have the Deep South. You have Appalachia. You have Indiana. Technically, Ohio and Iowa now are going to be placed in this category, South Carolina, Maine second district, and the state of Alaska. Trump just did so well in the primary there to the point where obviously it's not the only indicator, but for anybody that said, oh, well, Biden's going to make a play for Alaska, it doesn't really seem like there's any major warning sign for Donald Trump in the higher third party uh, vote share in the mix probably helps Trump, if anything. So... Out of the gate, Donald Trump with 149 electoral votes. Now let's fill out the states that are going to be going to Biden by 10 points or more. We got the entirety of the West Coast, including Hawaii, even though I think Hawaii might be closer 
than it usually is. Then we have a lot of these states up in New England and and some of the Mid-Atlantic. Now, New Jersey's an interesting one to watch the margins of. It could be under 10. New York, there's been some polling that has it around 10. I think it's going to be just a little bit over 10, but still a very major improvement for Donald Trump in New York. I do anticipate it to happen. A lot of that's going to come from New York City and Long Island, but still... You have Illinois, and I think Colorado will throw in this category as well. The state is changing. A lot of the liberals from California moving there, et cetera, you name it. Not really prime real estate for Donald Trump this election cycle. Maybe 20 years ago, it'd be a different story. But still, that's it for the safe states on both sides. Now we have to fill out the likely Republican states, including the state of Florida, And honestly, I would not be surprised if it voted for Trump by more than 10 percentage points at the end of the day. Republicans, I think they were actually trailing in voter registration in 2020, even though they still won the state because they won independence, because independents typically vote Republican in Florida. But now they have a million vote lead almost in registrations, probably over that by the time the election takes place. A lot of people from the Northeast moving down there, very conservative Yeah, Donald Trump is probably going to go out there and win the state of Florida by a comfortable margin. No, the abortion referendum on the ballot's not going to impact things. No, Rick Scott's not going to lose. The copes are tremendous, but Trump has Florida. Same thing with Texas. And like I said, there's been some polls that have Trump winning it by more than 10. Am I willing to say that right now? Well, maybe not. You know, there are liberals that are moving to Austin, even though a lot of the transplants moving to other parts of the state tend to be more conservative and vote Republican. But still, we'll see what happens. I think you might see some suburban reversion as Hispanics might move right in some places more than some of the you know, white voters are going to move left, even if they have moved left from 2016 to 2020. Doesn't mean that the trends are definitive or that Democrats can't hit a wall because of Biden's unpopularity. Same thing for the inverse in some places with white working class voters in the Midwest. Not all trends are just going to continue off a cliff and that we know. So you look at Texas. I think that Donald Trump is going to take the state by around eight points, similar to what we're going to see in Florida. And those states are crucial because he doesn't have to worry about them. And they pad his floor significantly and kind of just green light many paths to victory compared to, you know, the past where it wasn't a sure thing if he was going to win those states in 2020, even though he did. But you talk about the paths to 270, they are wide open, wide open. So Without further ado, I think that's it for the likely Republican states. Now we have to go to the likely Democrat states. We'll go to New Mexico. Again, this one could be interesting. It's a very hard state to predict. There are a lot of Hispanics there, but there's a lot of liberal whites in the Albuquerque area. You know, it's kind of like Colorado to the south, more so than Texas to the west in a lot of ways. But still, who knows what's exactly going to happen. I think Trump improves, but still... It's not really a state that he's going to likely pick off. The Republican Party in New Mexico is pretty weak as well, and that's important to take into consideration. New Hampshire is another one. Um, Personally, I think that this state is just too far gone. A lot of TDS sufferers in the state of New Hampshire. I think it might get closer, but still, I actually think Maine is going to vote to the right of New Hampshire this election cycle. I think it's going to be like a five-point win for Biden. Maybe if the third-party vote share is high enough, it could be more competitive, but we'll see what happens as we uh, move closer to the election. Also, the state of Virginia, another state, yeah, I think that it could be within five. I think Trump is going to do better there. I think he's going to improve. He's going to run up the score. He's got the Youngkin endorsement, not like it carries a ridiculous amount of weight, but still the state is kind of turning a corner. Biden and his unpopularity mixed with the increased competence of the Republican Party of Virginia and possibly some Hispanic voters in Northern Virginia moving to the right possibly will counteract the, the, the trends and I think the state will turn a corner. It's not growing as fast as it was in the 2010s. I think that Biden wins it, but I don't think he's going to win it by double digits this time around. So that's Virginia. And now we can move on to the lean Republican states. And we're going to start off here. We're going to start off with the state of North Carolina. 
This is a big one. You look at the polling in North Carolina, it's so far looking very good for Donald Trump. He's up in the polls by 5.4%. He's showing no signs of slowing down. And you look at this, he's almost to 50%. This is a state where Republicans are improving in their voter registrations as well. They performed adequately in the midterms. This northeastern part of the state is moving to the right, as well as even the southeastern part. And I think, Trump, you might see a rebound in some of the exurban areas of Charlotte. It is true that the research triangle is going to probably continue to give Biden decent margins, but they don't really have enough pull to sway the state in his column. I think Trump wins it by around three to four points when it's all said and done, an improvement from 2016. And I also think the state of Georgia, this one is a state that Donald Trump is going to pick off. You have the immigration problem, including the whole Lake and Riley case, Biden basically going out there and defending and apologizing for calling the murder illegal, saying people like that built the country. It's a bad look, and we know it's a bad look. George is a state that took ridiculously high black turnout for Biden to even have a real shot at winning, and now he's really struggling to motivate those voters. The Atlanta area is not growing as fast as it was from you know 2016 to 2020. Over the past four years, I think that Donald Trump is going to make use of that. I think he's going to flip the state. I don't think he's going to win it by four, but I think a two to three point win may be in the cards. And the same thing regarding black turnout, potentially dipping, does affect a state like North Carolina as well. And that's a state that Trump won in 2020, and he'll probably win it by more in part because of that. Because it all comes down to turnout, who drops off from 2020, Biden's coalition not being that stable that we know. So now we can fill out the lean Democrat states, and we'll give Nebraska second to Biden in the lean column. Just seems like trends are going to be enough to give Biden the victory, even if he uh, ends up losing a little bit of support in that district to third parties, you name it. It's, you know, suburban Omaha. Republicans really dropped the ball by one, not making Nebraska a winner-take-all state, and B, by not trying to redistrict it into a Republican district, or at least a district that is swaying and not trending super hard to the left. So there's that. Then Maine at large, We've seen polls that have it close. Maine's got a mind of its own. I think we're going to see a high third-party vote share, keep the state under five, but I think that Biden's going to take the state. And the final state that we have in this column is the state of Minnesota. Republicans do well when there's a high third-party vote share. We see that in uh, 2016. We see that in the 2008 Senate race. We see that in the 2006, 2002 gubernatorial elections. The only time Republicans really do well is when you have a high third party vote share. And Biden did very poorly in the primary despite running up against literally nobody. It wasn't because Dean Phillips did well in his own district. Biden did worst in Minneapolis and St. Paul in part because a lot of these young voters and far left voters are upset with the way he's handled Palestine. They are not as likely to turn out for him as much as they were in 2020, which is a major, major problem. Yes, I think that Biden's still favored in Minnesota, but it is possible. It is possible that it could flip, and I think it's going to move right, but to what extent? I'm not ready to say that we've seen enough to show that the state's going to flip. The most accurate pollster has Biden up by two, which means it's within striking distance, it's flippable, but I think Trump is better suited focusing on Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Arizona, before he starts to expand the map into places like Minnesota. So without further ado, let's go fill out the rest of the states right here on this map and the tilt column, which means they're going to be voting either which side by less than two percentage points. So I think we're going to start off with Pennsylvania and work our way west. And Pennsylvania is a state that I'm going to give to Donald Trump. Now, Republicans, again, making gains in every single county and registrations. That was not the case in 2020 when they were losing ground in the Philadelphia suburbs. Now, people will point to the primary and they'll say, well, you know, 16, 17% of Republicans 
voted against Trump despite Haley dropping out. Meanwhile, you look at Biden, he only got like 87.8% despite not running up against anybody and being a sitting president. That's not good either, but I will say that Trump still set a record for a non-incumbent in the primary. And on top of it, I think you're going to see a lot of these northeastern Pennsylvania voters not be as enthused to come out for Joe Biden this time around. A lot of votes to be made up here. A lot of these counties move left from 2016 to 2020, but move right from 2012 to 2016. I think you're going to see them move right again, potentially. And Trump in the Philadelphia city proper, he gained in 2020, just like in New York. And it's possible that he could gain even more just because of issues like crime and the border crisis disproportionately impacting urban communities. And he did very well in Philadelphia city proper in the primary. So looking at that, I think that there's a lot of prime real estate for Trump in Pennsylvania so long as he gets his rural base out. Now more Republicans are signing on to the absentee program, which is huge. And I think that that could be enough to get Trump a narrow victory in Pennsylvania already at 270. He only needs Georgia and Pennsylvania and his 2020 states, but we're not done filling out the map. We have the state of Michigan, which if you look at polls right now, despite polls in Michigan underestimating Trump both times, they have Donald Trump leading by 1.2%, which is actually down from what they were showing a month or two ago. But still, I would have to say that Trump is favored in the state of Michigan. I don't even know if he's going to win it by 1%, but it's going to be a very close state. I think because of the auto industry and because black turnout in Detroit likely dipping, and because of the white progressive turnout dipping because of Palestine, as well as Muslims and other Arab voters in the Dearborn area and Wayne County as a whole, upset with how Biden's handled the Israel-Palestine conflict. It's a very big issue for them. I think that the state of Michigan is going to possibly flip into Donald Trump's column this time around. You look at Wayne County, you know, if Republicans go out there, they could trim that margin from 38 to 30 very quickly just based off of what I just said alone. And that doesn't even take anything else into account, any other gains in any other counties. And already Biden's margin cut in half. A lot of prime real estate in the rest of the state as well for Donald Trump. Therefore, Michigan, I'm going to put in his column, Wisconsin as well. This is a state where the polls have underestimated him by an average of like six to seven points, both election cycles. But right now, they are showing that Donald Trump is up by nearly two percentage points. Even applying the polling error from 2022 in the Senate race, he'd still get the win in Wisconsin. And again, there's a problem for Biden. You talk about these college towns, a lot of college towns across Wisconsin. Madison's a big one. I know Biden's still going to get ridiculous margins there, but even just a little drop off is definitely enough to doom him in a place like Wisconsin. You have other places like uh, Milwaukee, a lot of colleges there, La Crosse, Eau Claire, you name it, the UW system. But on top of that, you also have Republicans making gains in places like Racine and Kenosha, and it doesn't seem like there's going to be a big drop-off in Waukesha or Washington counties for Trump. I think in Ozaukee, you might see Biden make some gains, but that's only 7,000 votes. Trump could lose the county. I still think he'd win Wisconsin. And these driftless area counties in the southwestern and you know central part of Wisconsin, they keep getting redder and redder, and there's a lot of room to grow in these places, too. Yeah, I'm thinking that Republicans are going to pick the state off. Donald Trump is going to win Wisconsin. Possibly they could even win the Senate race as well in the state where polls are really tight despite Tammy Baldwin constantly being portrayed as some strong incumbent. But we'll cover that in tomorrow's Senate prediction. And we have two states left, Arizona and Nevada. Now we can go to the polls. We'll start off with Arizona. And Donald Trump is leading the polls in Arizona by 5%, even after the abortion ruling, which again, seems like that the state legislature kind of took care of that, and neutralized it today. And still, though, Donald Trump in the two polls conducted after that, and that doesn't even include the Trump internal, they show Trump leading by an average of 5.5 percentage points. And Trump being close to 48, 49 is huge for him because it's 
likely that that's enough for him to go out there and win with the third party candidates in the mix. Republicans always have a high floor in Arizona, even MAGA Republicans have a high floor in Arizona. If Trump is at 48, 49, that's his floor. Well, then he's probably going to win the state at the end of the day, even if some of these undecideds end up coming home to Biden. Also, it's a border state. You got the border crisis. You got Trump improving among Hispanic voters. That's not a good recipe for Democrats. Maricopa County has moved left, but it's a big county with different parts of it trending in different directions. And it's possible that Trump could get the best of those trends this time around. So keep that in mind. So already he's at 306 electoral votes, which was his 2016 total. But he could possibly add to it with Nevada. And I think he will add to it with Nevada. You look at the state right here in the polls. He's up by nearly five points in the polls. Now, I will say polls in Nevada, for some reason, actually underestimate Democrats, unlike in many other states, and they've done that for a while. But still, I will say that in presidential years, it's not always that way. They were on point in 2020. They got the margin perfectly. And Trump leading the polls by 4.5. I think that that's a telltale sign he's going to win, but also party registrations are looking better for Republicans. They're doing better even in these midterm elections that haven't really benefited Republicans in other places. But Clark County is really all where it's at. A lot of white working class voters and Hispanic voters and conservative Californians moving into Clark County. Well, if you trim the margin in Clark down to, you know, we could even say a four five point win for Joe Biden right there. Donald Trump wins the state by 1%. So already that's enough to move the needle. That doesn't move some of these counties redder. That doesn't even address Reno. I think it's probably going to stagnate, but I think Trump is going to end up winning the state by one to two points. And he's going to be the first Republican to win it since Bush in 2004. So here's the map. 312 for Donald Trump, 226 for Joe Biden. Not a lot has changed since the last prediction, but the recent polling data we've gotten and the way that the race is moving right now kind of solidifies that. We'll do an update uh, in probably about a couple of weeks or so to see what the state of the race is. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.